Hey guys, we need to be really good at solving equations, one-step equations, multi-step equations that we're going to be taking a look at today. You've been solving equations for many years now, and you've also solved multi-step equations for a few of those years. So we need to know exactly how to solve these equations. There's definitely many ways to solve these equations. I'm only going to go through one method for each problem, but if you were to do a different method for the same equation and you get the same solution, please know that you're most likely right, okay? Because there's many ways to solve these equations, especially in the beginning few, first few steps. After that, then we kind of are limited with how many different ways that we can go ahead and finish the equation. But like I said, if you do solve it a different way and you get the same answer, please know that you did a great job. Let's take a look together. The directions say solve each equation and simplify your answer. So in the first problem, I see I have the distributive property going on here on the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation. So first thing I need to do is distribute. 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 4 is 12 equals, bring down that equal sign, 2.5 times x would give us 2.5x, and then 2.5 times negative 6 is negative 15. When I look at an equation now at this step, what I will always ask myself and I tell my students every time to look at is look at what you have on both sides of your equation. Do you have numbers on both sides of your equation? You definitely do. You have a positive 12 and a negative 15. Do you have variables on both sides of your equation? You definitely do. You have a 3x and a 2.5x. Technically, at this stage, you can remove any one of those four terms that you want to. You could decide to subtract 3x on both sides. You could subtract 12 on both sides. You could subtract 2.5x on both sides. You could add 15 on both sides because the whole point is to isolate the variable. And here, you technically can isolate the variable on either side that you want. You could remove one of the numbers on either side that you want. It technically would not matter what you did. For me, I decided to subtract 2.5x on both sides. So when I do that, 3x minus 2.5x would leave me with half x plus 12 equals my 2.5x minus 2.5x that has now simplified out. I simply bring down my negative 15. Now that I did that, I eliminated the variable on one of the sides. Notice what I have on both sides of my equation now, numbers, 12 and negative 15. So then this is where I would ask myself, which one of those numbers do I need to remove so that I start to get my variable x to be by itself? I would need to remove the positive 12 because the 12 is on the same side of my equation as the variable. Getting rid of the negative 15 is really not going to help me very much because if I get rid of that, I will have zero on the right-hand side of my equation and I'm still going to have a number on the same side as my variable. How do we get rid of this positive 12x? We subtract 12 on both sides. I'm then left with 0.5x equals negative 15 minus 12 is negative 27. Last step, now it's a one-step equation. 0.5 times x, we know side by side means multiply. So to undo the multiplying by 1 half, I divide both sides by half, and negative 27 divided by a half is negative 54. I can always go back and take my answer of negative 54, substitute it back in for x, and make sure I get the same value on the left-hand side of the equation that I do on the right. And that's how I check my answer to make sure it's correct. Next one, I see I also have the distributive property going on. Over here on the left-hand side, notice that the two will get distributed to the x and the negative five, but it has absolutely nothing to do with this positive seven because that seven is not in the parentheses at all. I go to distribute two times x and I get two x. Two times negative five is negative 10, and I bring down my positive seven. Equals negative three times two x is negative six x, negative three times negative six, remember a negative times a negative is a positive, and I get positive 18. I wanna go ahead and combine these like terms over on the left-hand side. Negative 10 plus seven is really a negative three. So I'm rewriting that as two x minus 13 equals negative six x plus 18. And now I'm in the same position that I was in the previous problem. I notice I have variables on both sides, 2x and negative 6x. I notice I have numbers on both sides, negative 3 and positive 18. I can technically get rid of any one of these four terms that I want first. What I chose to do is I chose to add 6x on both sides. So by adding 6x on both sides, 2x plus 6x is 8x. 
So now I have 8x minus 3 equals, those x's were simplified out, equals f18. And now I would ask myself, what do I have on both sides? Numbers. Which number would I have to get rid of to start to get the variable to be by itself? The negative 3 or the positive 18? The answer would be negative 3 because the negative 3 is on the same side of the equation as my variable. How do we get rid of a negative 3? We add 3. Those 3s would then be simplified out, and I'd be left with 8x equals 21. We know 8x side by side means multiply, and so I divide both sides by 8 in order to get the variable by itself. 21 eighths is technically a beautiful answer. It's a simplified and proper, but if you were asked for decimal uh, version, it would be 2.625. Next two, fractions to distribute. So there's many different ways to do this. I could actually do a method with clearing my fractions. We're gonna see that in the next problem actually. Or I could simply distribute my fractions. There's many, many ways to take care of these problems. I'm gonna distribute in this case. 1 half times 4x is 2x. 1 half of negative 8 is negative 4. 3 fourths times 8x, well, 3 times 8 is 24. 24 divided by 4 is 6, so that's 6x. Plus 3 fourths of 4 is just 3. Again, I have numbers and variables on both sides. I can technically remove any term I want first. For me, I decided to subtract 2x on both sides, and I was left with negative 4 equals 4x plus 3. I now ask myself, what do I have on both sides? I see I have numbers on both sides. Which number is on the same side of my equation as my variable? It's the positive 3. How do we get rid of a positive 3? We subtract 3. Negative 4 minus 3 would bring us to negative 7 equals 4x. My 3 minus 3 is simplified out. 4 and the x are side by side. Side by side means multiply, and I know I need to divide both sides by 4 to get my answer. Negative 7 fourths is technically a beautiful, simplified, and proper answer. I would love that answer, or if you need the decimal equivalent, it's negative 1.75. Next one. Now this one, huh, we don't have any distributing. We could take a break from the distributive property, but we do have fractions. Now, I could convert those fractions to friendly decimals. I mean, one half is only 0.5, two fifths is 0.4. That's easy enough to work with. Or I could use a method called clearing the fractions. And clearing the fractions means I want to multiply both sides of my equation by the least common multiple of my denominators. I notice that my denominators in my two fractions are 2 and 5. The least common multiple of 2 and 5 is 10. If I multiply both sides of my equation by 10, what will happen is I will eliminate my fractions out completely and I'll be able to just do the problem like I did the other problems. Let's take a look. 10 times 1 half x, well half of 10 is 5x. 10 times 5 is 50. Equals. 10 times 2 fifths, well 10 times 2 is 20, divided by 5 is 4, so that would be 4x. And then 10 times negative 8, is negative 80. By multiplying the entire equation or both sides of the equation by 10, the least common multiple of my denominators, I now have a very easy equation to solve. I could get rid of any of these terms. I chose to subtract 4x on both sides. 5x minus 4x is just 1x plus 50 equals negative 80. I have numbers on both sides. Which number is on the same side as my variable? It's the 50, so I would go ahead and subtract 50 on both sides, and I get my final answer of x equals negative 130. Excellent. Last two. Over on the left-hand side, I could distribute my fractions, but in this case, two-thirds of five is not going to give me any very friendly answer at all. So the other option that I could technically do is I could multiply both sides of this equation by the least common multiple of my denominators. The least common multiple of three and two is six. So imagine I just multiplied both sides of this equation by six. Look what's going to happen. Six times two-thirds Six times two is 12, 12 divided by three is four. So now this is really just four times five x plus six. Six times three halves, six times three is 18, 18 divided by two is nine. This is really just nine times eight x minus four. Now I can use my distributive property. Four times five x is 20 x, 
4 times 6 is 24 equals 9 times 8x is 72x. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. I have numbers and variables on both sides. I can eliminate out whatever I want first. I chose to subtract 72x on both sides first. I'm not really sure why, but that's what I chose to do. 20x minus 72x is negative 52x plus 24 equals negative 36. I have numbers on both sides. I need to get rid of the number that's on the same side of my equation as my variable. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 24. I'm then left with negative 52x equals negative 60. The negative 52 and the x are side by side, which means to multiply. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 52. And I end up getting x equals 15 thirteenths simplified. Last one. Oh, there's three different denominators, 3, 4, and 6. What's the least common multiple of 3, 4, and 6? Hmm. Do you have it? Do you think you have it? If you guess the answer being 12, you are correct. If you went a bigger number, like 24, I, it'll actually work too. It's really any common multiple. I like to use the least because it works with smaller numbers, but if you were to pick 24, let's say, and multiply both sides of the equation by 24, I promise you, you will get the same final answer. All right, let's take a look. 12 times 1 third, well, a third of 12 is 4, so that's 4x, plus 12 times 1 fourth, a fourth of 12 is 3, equals 12 times 2 thirds, so 12 times 2 is 24, 24 divided by 3 is 8, so that's 8x, and then 12 times negative 1 sixth would be negative 2. We can get rid of whatever term we want on both sides here. In this case, I decided to subtract 4x on both sides. That left me with 3 equals 4x minus 2. And I have numbers on both sides. I need to get rid of the number that's on the same side of my equation as my variable, which is the negative 2, by adding 2. I'm then left with 5 equals 4x. 4 and the x are side by side, which means to multiply. I divide both sides by 4. And 5 fourths is a beautiful answer, or you can write it as 1.25. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.